Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Clark Brown, and this is Word and Song for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Let us pray. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ, and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Genesis, chapter 18. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. 
Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Our reading from Genesis is part of this grand sweeping narrative of how Abraham and Sarah left their home country and faithfully followed God to what would become the land of their descendants, Israel. Abraham and Sarah were by no means uh, perfect uh, people, but this episode shows their faithfulness in how they offer this exemplary hospitality to the three visitors. They shared their best food in great quantity, and they waited on these strangers until they were satisfied and ready to travel on. Sarah, of course, it should be noted, was especially busy as she was expected so much of that food. That sort of hospitality was really broadly expected, the norm in the ancient Near East during Abraham's time, as well as during Jesus' time. In fact, it it really remains deeply embedded in the culture of that part of the world to this day. With that in mind, we realize that when Martha welcomed Jesus and the disciples into her home, the expectations for her and her household were very high, and that there really was a lot of work to be done to feed all of those guests. She was fulfilling her role as host, and her impatience with her sister seems completely warranted. Besides that, though, we we think of what just happened before this episode in the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus was tested by that lawyer, and Jesus told him to answer his question, his test, that parable of the Good Samaritan. And the the punchline of that parable comes when Jesus just asked that religious leader, so... Who was the neighbor to this man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And he said, I guess the one who showed mercy, even if he was a Samaritan. No, Jesus said simply, go and do likewise. Go and act with mercy. Is that not what Martha was also doing when she was showing hospitality? Martha responded to Jesus' call as he and his disciples entered the village. She welcomed him. She offered him the mercy of hospitality. She seems to do exactly what Jesus called for in the parable of the Good Samaritan, to love and show mercy to her neighbor, even one that she probably didn't even know yet. But When she asked his teacher to command her sister to help her, it kind of sounds to us like he scolded her. Is that what he actually did? He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things, but few things are needed. Indeed, only one. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. You know, the way that Jesus repeated her name. I don't think Jesus had a tone of rebuke in his voice or even disappointment, but really one of compassion. She was indeed worried about being a good host. And maybe even she was worried about her sister that she would be looked down upon because she wasn't doing what a woman was supposed to be doing. You know, in that time, For a woman, you would never sit with men and be like a disciple. No, you're supposed to just take care of the home and serve. But Jesus told Martha that it is not as necessary as she believes to do all that work. Indeed, women can sit at the feet of Jesus and listen like the disciples did. This would have been shocking news for that time, even revolutionary. It would have been a new teaching for Martha and Mary and for everyone else in that room. So maybe instead of a scolding, we should hear Jesus speaking to Martha with compassion and offering her hope and release. 
This passage is just one example of how in the Gospel of Luke especially, Jesus included women. Women should be disciples too, not just men. And the church and the world is still struggling with the implications of that teaching. But besides that, there's something else I think we need to hear and remember today, no matter our gender, and that is simply Life is not just doing. Many of us take our identity from what we are able to do, the work we do at our jobs or at home or at church or anywhere else. That doing, when done with compassion and love, is how we live out the second part of the great commandment and love our neighbors as ourselves. It is how we use our God-given gifts to praise and love God with our whole heart and mind and soul and strength. But life can't just be doing. Indeed, sometimes our doing consumes us. Sometimes we live as if God will only love us and only value us if we do enough, if we act and be good and do productive things. Now, sure, God, God's love empowers us to love our neighbors. But first today, let us remember that God simply loves us. God loves us just because we are God's beloved ones. God doesn't love us because of what we do or think or even believe, but just Because we are God's beloved. Beloved ones in Christ, like Martha, we do not need to be distracted by so many things. Our value as people does not come from what we can do. There is a time for work, but there must be a time for rest. There is time to do mercy, but there must be a time to receive mercy. We are called to love, but we must also receive love. There is a time to serve, but also a time to sit at Jesus' feet and listen and grow and learn. This was uh, an important lesson for the first followers of Jesus first ones to hear the gospel of Luke read out loud, and it's an important lesson for us today. We need that time at Jesus' feet as much as we need to serve. We need time to receive the word and time also to act on it. Knowing we need both guides us in our personal lives, but also It really helps us to design our life together as a congregation. So we we want to balance time and opportunities for study and prayer and worship with time and opportunities to serve each other and our community. We need both. Does prayer and worship and study always come first? No, actually. Sometimes service happens first and then reflection follows but they go hand in hand. Sometimes opportunities to serve are the entry points for new people to join a congregation, and sometimes it's worship or study instead. But both are necessary. And serving is not just limited by things we do with our hands and feet, but also includes the caring support that we give, like a listening ear or offering a kind word. But still... Today, we need to receive the word like Mary did. We need to be fed by times of worship and study and prayer and like coming to the Lord's table itself. We need that nourishment. So we return and remember Jesus' words to Martha that right now, few things are needed. Indeed, only one. For as we sit at Jesus' feet, we hear the truth once again. You are loved 
and the whole world is loved. Share this good news. Amen.